For weeks now, the Sri Lankan government has said images like these, broadcast on pro-Tamil outlets, are just Tamil Tiger propaganda. For weeks, it's denied accusations that its armed forces have been using heavy artillery or air power in their self-designated no-fire zone, where tens of thousands of civilians and the last remaining rebels had clustered. But now that appears to have changed as a result of these United Nations satellite images. UNOSAT says these pictures show craters which were formed inside the zone between the 15th of March and the 19th of April, the day before the army breached earthen defences and civilians started to pour out. A senior UNOSAT official says the accuracy involved would have required air power. Now, a senior foreign ministry official tells Al Jazeera that the government has indeed bombed its self-declared no-fire zone from the air, but that it was weeks ago and the targets were the rebels' heavy guns, well away from civilian areas. As long as the, the retaliation is proportionate, it is perfectly legitimate. And what we did exactly was located these guns and retaliated against those guns. But I would challenge anybody to say that these shell holes were created uh, once the civilians moved into this area and, and, and it became occupied by the civilians. That's a very different line from the one that was being maintained at the time UNOSAT says the bombing craters were being made. The categorical position has always been that uh, this is a uh, no-fire zone that we have declared and we will not uh, fire into that no-fire zone. There is no shelling. We demarcated this safe zone for the safety of the civilians. There is no shelling taking place in that area. The Sri Lankan government says these images from pro-Tamil sources, reportedly showing a recent aerial bombardment, are spliced together and misleading. Nonetheless, these latest comments appear to confirm that the Sri Lankan military has, despite repeated denials, fired into an area where it says the Tamil Tigers have been using civilians as human shields. Many of those who have managed to get out say the rebels were indeed holding them against their will and fired on them to prevent their escape. As more details emerge from the last bloody weeks of this long civil war, the charges against both sides are mounting. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera. Palitha Kahuna, as the permanent secretary of Sri Lanka's foreign affairs ministry, will speak to him live in just a few moments. But first, here's what he told me two weeks ago when I asked him about the reports that the military was attacking inside its no-fire zone. So you do admit that there are civilians in this area? There are area. civilians in there. So do you admit that there is government shelling also in this area? Absolutely not, because the government has issued instructions, very strict instructions, to the military not to use aerial bombing or shelling into this area. Is I know you're going to tell me that there are some people in that area who, who claim that the area is being shelled. Uh, I, I, th I think we have only the government's version and the LTT version uh, to go by. The government says it does not shell, and we believe that the government troops do not shell this area. Are there a large number of rebels in this area? The number is small. We believe that there are about 200 rebels trapped in this area who are using the civilians as a shield to protect themselves. The government does not shell this area because we know that the area is full of other people our civilians and we have no need to sell this area for the simple reason the fruit is about to fall into our hands after 25 years of fighting so why should we create volunteers why should we create sympathizers for the other side by shelling this area and dr kahona now joins us again on the phone from colombo dr kahona i believe you've been listening to those um sound bites there so, um, some uh -huh, of them denying uh -huh. the shelling Although just a few hours ago, you said that the government had retaliated to the Tamil Tigers and taken them out using proportionate force. So there has been firepower in the safe zone. Now, now Gabriela, you've got to get a timeline onto those statements. What I said earlier was accurate. The government at the time was not shelling. And what I said today is also accurate. We do not shell this area. But previously, when the LTT did possess the guns in, uh, or fight those guns in that area, we took them out. But that, that's, uh, you need to get a timeline on this. Uh, we, you know, this, this no-fire zone has now existed for about two months. The LTT, when it pulled back into this area, an area that was created by us for the safety of the civilians, not for the safety of the LTT, we had to do something about it because they were firing at our troops, advancing on them from this zone. That was weeks ago. And also, uh, I have had the opportunity to look at these uh, photographs purportedly released by the United Nations or leaked by the United Nations. Uh, 
again, I ask you the same question. Do we know exactly when these uh, shell holes were created? What created these shell holes? Uh, how big are they? I, I think it's important to determine all this. The government will uh, determine this, not for any other reason, but to disprove the claim that the government had actually uh, been responsible for most of these shell holes. Dr. Cohen, I'm glad you've taken a look at those UN satellite pictures. Now, the head of the Rapid Mapping Unit has told us that the craters were caused by airstrikes, most likely. The dates were between the 15th of March with the latest crater on the 19th of April, and the satellite technology used to accurately, accurately pinpoint date and location. So, as far as the UN is concerned, there has been shelling in that area, and the government, who's made many conflicting reports, just keeps denying this. We, we, we would like to determine uh, the dates of those shell holes ourselves. We are not going to rely on the UN. We are not exactly certain what sort of skills or expertise the UN has to decide that a particular shell hole was made on a particular day. I think that's remarkable. Uh, that, that type of skill is remarkable, especially when you're looking at a satellite photo. Uh, we, will, we will examine these photos ourselves, and we will let the world know what the truth is. So, and also another point that comes to my mind at this is, bear with me for a second. Why on earth is the UN spying on a member state? We are a member of the United Nations. We have made a statement, categoric statement to the United Nations and the world. And why is the United Nations engaging in a spying mission on Sri Lanka. I don't think it is doing that. Uh, whoever so, is doing it is using the United Nations cover to bring discredit to the government of Sri Lanka. Maybe the UN is just as confused as we are. So are you accusing the UN of being a spy? I'm not accusing the UN, but I believe that someone or some groups are using the UN as a cover to bring discredit to a member state. We are, are an equal member of the United Nations like any one of the other 193 members. This is a very frightening prospect. The UN going around the world uh, spying on its member states. Just to well, build why, up if, if you have them. nothing to hide, why are you so concerned about this? No, I, I think it, it, is a, it is a worrying tendency because this is an organization of which there are 193 members, big, small, very small. And what right does the UN have, or anybody working for the UN, have to go around building up cases to discredit those countries? Okay, well, let's go back to exactly what is happening in Sri Lanka's no-far zone. You are denying, or are you denying that there has been any kind of artillery fire since February 12th, since it was I, declared I, I, a safe I, I, zone? As I said in the morning, uh, Gabriela, this is an area that has been contested by the Tamil Tigers and the government for the last 13 or 14 years. There was a major military camp belonging to the government in that area previously. Fighting had been intense. Artillery, tank fire, etc. took place on, a, on an incessant basis. Uh, that is why we would like to decide for ourselves by using our, uh, our experts as to when those shell holes were created on the ground. We do not believe that they were caused in recent times. Well, Dr. Palitha Kahuna, thanks very much for talking to us again.